So, Oshin calving, your calving here on the left. Yeah. Maybe before we start, you kind of a basically just our area small or... area where we yeah. get changed, wash our hands. We've all our medicines, fridges for a colostrum, everything you need close to where you're calving. It's, and it, it was handy, you know, it's in the corner of the shed, no big building work. You're not getting a separate hut or anything. And yeah. you have everything beside you. You have your milk heaters. If we get milk during the day and then we're feeding at night, yeah. stick them on. Milk's, milk's hot in 10 minutes. So. And you've a lot, I see, of uh, SOPs. <laughs> SOPs, yeah. So for it's not, you know, it's not a normal farm where it's a family and everyone knows. There's different people on the weekends and stuff and you take rotations, you have your weekend rotations and then simple enough stuff. If you have a student in, Tommy take a lot of students and to get them familiar, just give it a quick read and then you can't mm. go wrong. If mm. someone's not about to ask, go down and they look at it. And it's the same in the cow house. So what routines have you without going through them all? Just what, what are the key ones you have there? Be, the main ones would be the calves. So any calf ran or the medicine. So if you use a medicine, how do you put it in hard watch? How do you inject an animal? Where is the stuff? Simple enough stuff. No, none of it's rocket science. It's yeah. just to make take any doubt out of the, yeah. the person's Just hand. a way to do it. Just a way to do it. And yeah. It's no harm in having it on the wall, even if they don't look at it. Yeah. You know, it's it's easy and it's easy to follow. Okay. So, calving then, say, do you calve them as individuals? Calve them as individuals. So, yeah. they come from their top house, yeah. come down as we think they're close, take them down here, and then you have a camera for every bay, yeah. then a 360 camera, so you can see exactly when she's calving. Once she's calved, then uh, milk her as soon as possible. We always bag the calves, minimum three litres, okay. but a litre per every 10 kilos. So you have a milking machine here? Yeah, so we have, our, we have our pipes, or we have our vacuum okay, lying the whole great. way over. Yeah, yeah, that's handy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and you have a winch overhead? Winch, well that was for when they had the sucklers at the big yeah. calves, but I tell you, we actually used it last week, the boys were working at the vector, Jamie and Joe, so it helped them actually lift stuff out of it, so yes. it worked out, that's probably what it's we used. It's a handy thing to have in a farm. Oh, why wouldn't you have it? Yeah. If you could. Yeah. I like got simple too, it's just all on buttons and anyone could use it. Okay. Yeah. Great. So the vacuum then you have a small vacuum pump have you? Small vacuum pump. It's a what me it's a full wood pump in there. They had it on the on the oh, other yeah. farm there actually was one, so they just yeah. tuck it there, switch it on at the wall. You have you have vacuum on them whole calving pens, so yeah. No matter where they calve your So do you milk there always? Always first cow. How many calves? How many milks would you one? Usually one. Yeah. If it's a heifer or if it's a cow you maybe hadn't cleaned properly. Milk here we don't like or don't like sending them down until okay. they've properly cleaned, you know. Yeah. Do you have a night calver here or anything? Is there a need no, for no, calving no. every month? It, well I suppose it's not we all live quite close to the farm. Yeah. I'm the furthest, I'm only twenty minutes away. Yeah. And then Eddie only lives maybe two minutes away and Kevin maybe ten, so we all just keep an eye on the camera. If it doesn't suit me, if I'm at football or something, put in a text in our group chat, who can yes. go in. And yes. If it's your weekend now, you have to go in. Like it's your, that's your responsibility. Fine. So, it's not too so I know your dry cows are here. Dry cows are up here. here. So this is what we call route two for the vector. So, <clears throat> so again, they're all, there's no slats there, just all on peak. So yeah. you'd be talking maybe bed at about a foot and a half or so. So we typically bed that maybe once every two weeks, a week and a half, clean it all out, real, real easy cleaned out with a loader. And we actually bed it with a dung spreader. I would have put it on the social media. Okay. It's fill your dung spreader and just bed it. And yeah. There's no, totally there's no physical work to it, yeah. you know? And, and then all's fed, all's pushed in every 60 minutes, so. Is there ever a challenge from cows coming off this to getting them to lie in cubicles no. after? No. no bother. Well, no. We, had, we had three heifers the year that didn't, take the cubicles too well, it just took a bit of training, but it wasn't from this, it was from where they were kind of reared, because they'd, yeah. they'd only go here maybe a month before Calvin, mm. get on the proper diet and mm. get them used to the whole system. I see. Yeah. So I know you're building a calf house at the moment, but in the meantime, this is what you're using In the meantime, here. this is what we have, we have the GFC hutches, very happy with them now. Yeah. Like, you have no worry about uh, the calves being wet, easily bedded, like I just go up with a wheelbarrow every maybe second day, mm throw me straw in, the calf lies in it. Yeah. And whatever it is about them hutches, the calves take to the bucket teats very, very quick. Like we had other hutches down below when the calves are first born and you set in a bottle and it'd take you three days to get a calf used to it. Yeah. After a day, the calves know that. Whatever it is about them and then to clean them out, I just tip them over to the loader, put the forks in under, the straw is gone, give okay. them a power wash, away you go. Okay. Because they're plastic, they're very easy washed. Yeah. And then we have our we have all our hutchers numbered, so we have all our buckets numbered then, so okay, no matter who's, I'll, I typically feed the calves, but no matter who's there, Shannon would feed them at the weekends, mm. you know 
Hutch number one, gets bucket number one. You're not transferring any scours, anything like that. Okay. It's all about keeping it as consistent as we can. And you have a bracket then overhead for your lamp. Where yeah, for the lamp. So uh, Mickey Monin is the electrician here. He'd be very good. He'd, uh, yeah. he'd install them at the start of this year. So okay. works right. out good. We put up a wee bit of sand just to stop any, any stuff running. And then it goes in the tank down there. So. so you have a tidy JCB here? Tidy wee JCB. That would do. That would put in our silage in at the other farms with a shear grab. Puts in your beet. Just basically all farm work. The busiest machine on the farm. Okay. Without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. You, you need a good loader. Yeah. And so the other the, the other one with the shear grab or the black That's cutter? just for the black it stays cutter. on it. Stays on it. Yeah. There's no okay. point taking it off it. Yeah. Every third day it's in use, so there's no point interfering. Fine. <clears throat> and then we have once our calves are done in the hutches, so they we give them typically all milk until maybe three weeks of age. Yes. That's what they do in Austria. Tommy would send Eddie and our uh, vets and stuff out to Austria and milk diet is the best and then we put them on to milk powder then after that. So okay. We typically try to get them up as far as nine litres or so, get them a good start before putting them down here and then they're in groups of six, just easier to, easier to feed and everything. So. And you've got demand for bull calves that you don't keep? Excellent demand. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> we're pushing it big time on social media and stuff and we have a lot of, we've had a big, big success with it. Yeah. Boys texting, farmers always texting, there's always demand for calves and good calves. And you have a regular supply every month in a way too, which helps always, I suppose. You know, yeah. if, if someone's looking for a calf, they're ne it's never too far away. Yes. We don't like selling them until they're ready to go and yes. we dehorn them and vaccinate them and have okay. them ready. And yeah. You just want to build up a good name and try to get them sold as quick as possible. Yes, for sure. So, so what's going on here, Oshin? So basically they're just an extension for more calves. Yeah. Tommy keeps a lot of his calves here, a lot of bull calves, so it leads you have a lot of numbers. So we're hoping now we'll have them igloos on the outside of the house slightly in and then calves will go into this section here that'll all be bedded. Yeah. To drink, and then this section here will be for the small hutches, which you'll see okay. later on. Yeah. And you went for the clear roof. Clear roof. A uh, better job, I think, for calves. Yeah. Well, we, we don't know. Yeah. Nicer environment. So why not? Yeah. Yeah. Why, why not try it? Yeah. You know, everything else is the solid sheeting, so you might as well try something different. Okay. So, so they, they're going to turn the way they are there, or are they going? No, to, they're, they're going, going to be facing out, so yeah. the door will be going in this way. Okay. Yeah. And they'll have a full, you know, they'll have a full pen there to go out, and then the igloo to go in. So you're hoping you should get 12 to 15 calves per each. Right. The way we're calving at the minute, it's like, say, in blocks of maybe 30 or 40. So it should suit our batches of calves. It's just hard yeah. getting, you know, the right amount of spots because you have a lot of calves and a lot of animals everywhere. So, so you have a nice office area and you have a nice Brilliant access office up anyway. area, yeah, yeah. So Impressive stairs. <clears throat> yeah. I suppose on any farm, the office is as important as anywhere. If you have an untidy office, you're not going to get stuff done. So. Yeah. If we have a wet day or if we get a chance, you go up here with the horizon system then, sure, you have everything on your computer, everything on your phone, and then that was a sign we kind of done. Tommy's wife, Roxy, would have made that just to kind of promote the business again. Yes, put a brand in it. Yeah, so. And then hopefully you'd have the heating on, I suppose, yeah, this time of the year. Indeed, anyway. This time of the year, and then I can, I can manage this here works very well with your vector system, so I can manage if I want to increase my fences, so increase the height of the feed barriers or the silages, I just basically dial it in. So you have your different sections, so top shed spring is their dry cows, yeah. and then main shed milk. So if I want to increase their feed height. When you say that, just the volume ultimately? Just, yeah, the yeah. height, yeah, the volume. We go to 40, it was at 35, Yeah. apply changes, and that's it done. You know, it's it's as easy as that with that Th system. And is that 35 inches or 35? I think, yeah, I think it is. No, it wouldn't be inches, would it? No, I think it could be centimetres. Yeah, it would be centimetres, I'd okay, say. Okay, 35 centimetres. Typically, the dry cows, we leave it a wee bit higher, just yeah. in case it had to do more for the dairy cows or whatever. Mm. There's, mm. No, there's no issue. And then I can check every report, like our breeding report, health report, on every cow on the horizon. So, mm. you know, you're never too far away from information. Yes. We can see their um, our cow lifetime production. So it'll give us actually a predicted lactation. So say we have a predicted lactation of like 12,000 litres. You know, that's that's fair out going for some of them cows. It's only second calvers. Yes. So we won't properly know how well the flectors are going to perform because we only have second and third lactation yeah. animals. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what peaks they can get to. Yeah. 
the, the protein is lo on the lower side. Yeah, it is on the is, lower is that, side. Is that just a breed thing, or is it? I think more it's just a feed thing feed. and a breed thing. Yes. we can increase that. There's no, there's definitely scope to increase it with different feeds, and we're yeah. still learning. Like we're only in year two. There's no, yes. there's no none of Tommy's heifers is actually milking yet. Yes, that's now in the next three or four weeks. And mm. once you get maybe in the year four mark, you'll be able to. Yeah. See, right, cow's low in protein, I can't be keeping her, and go from there, basically. What information are you doing here, or, or different things you're doing here at the computer that you're not doing downstairs at each robot? So, not doing each, um, so I would be checking on the health, so down on the robot, it wouldn't show you if an animal wasn't ruminating, hmm. or if her movement was down or anything like that there, so that'd be a good thing now you can do in the computer, and you can do it in your phone too, yes. as quick as anything, so I'd go in and check, Right, our feed efficiency's down. What's wrong? What's wrong here? Is there something wrong with the vector? Is there something wrong with the cows going mm. to the mm. anything like that? There, like why is why is your protein up or why is your protein down? And then we can check our cows are milking three point four times a day, which is yeah. good, but it's slightly on the high side too. Yeah, and why is it on the high side? <clears throat> is it the direct? It's on the high time? side, maybe because our milk access isn't correct to the cows' lactation. So okay, if I th if I think I have a problem, I pick up the phone. Uh, the F farm management support team in Lely, one of the girls, Sinead Grania, Sean, or any of them, or Jordan, and I say, well, what do you think of that? So they'll say, right, maybe you need to pay, maybe you need to change your optimum milk yield. So when I talked to you, it was 9.5, I thought, well, we have it at 9.8 there, and maybe that's why it's leading a wee bit high. Okay. And you're always, you're all the time questioning. I know, but you have the ability to tweak it then. You have the ability to tweak it, and if it didn't work today, so it should just change back tomorrow. Hmm. That's all it takes. But it's only as good as you, put, you know, as your input. Yeah, you you're know? not afraid to take, obviously. No, no, no. no I don't. I don't mind. Well, you're well able for it. Yeah. Well, yeah. as a young farmer, you're kind of expected. That's the way it's going. Yes. So. Yeah. You grow up with it, and yeah, it's yeah. easy to engage with it. Oh yeah, like and here, especially with that lally stuff, I find it very easy to use. Yeah. Most people do. Yeah. Like everything's on your phone, everything's on the computer, and yeah, it's only a click of a button, really. Yeah. Great. And if you look at it long enough, you will find it. Mm. I find, and you're better to learn it yourself than just picking up the yeah. phone. So for people here, Oshin, just to finish, like your your daily routine or a daily routine yeah. here, what you know from the time someone comes into the yard to yeah. what time someone leaves, what is it? Right. So typically, we I start at eight o'clock. So go in, uh, come in, I check what I showed you on the robot. So your collect cows, your other health work list. Then I, I'm the man who feeds the calves. So get me milk ready. So I'll go on to each robot. Right. I need ten liters from this cow, ten liters from that cow. Gather up me buckets. Feed me calves. That usually between feeding calves and young stock takes till about ten o'clock. We go for tea then any time after that, and then you'd get a main job done maybe between tea and dinner time. So if you clean out a shed if you had to put in bales on the other farms, stuff like that there. And then you're gonna wash the robots maybe when you come back from dinner at one o'clock. So one to two is dinner. Maybe if you wanted to dehorn calves, small job maybe between two o'clock and four o'clock something like that there, and then from four o'clock on, you'd basically do the red up, so get everything fed, make sure your kitchen's ready for the for the night ahead, make sure your cows are all right, feed your calves, and then, without fail now, you'd always be home near enough by half six. Okay. So you wouldn't get that on many farms. How many people involved there's, here? There's three here, and then we have Shannon works on the weekends, mm. so between the three, you do every third weekend, and then Shannon's on every weekend. Mm. She's very good now, and then you have if Shannon's not about then, there's a student then, Alana, she can okay. come in and cover her. So yeah. it works pretty good. Like there's, I know you're only milking 130 cows here and people are going to think it's your three staff, but all the bulls near there are kept, all the heifers are kept. So there's a wider business. Yeah. As well. yeah. Like it's, it's over 300 head of cattle. And when you take that into concern mm. and consideration, you know, it, it yeah. adds up. And as we look out the window, there's plans for more expansion <coughs> then of the development. Yeah. So Tommy, uh, Tommy and Aidan looked about it. Um, last year, the, they made the jump, so they've built their tanks and they have their cubicle beds nearly there. So that's going to be another shed for another two robots. Okay. Milk more flex is, but he's going to do that in time. He's going to use his own stock. He's not going to import anymore yeah. because that would uh, that'd be rushing the thing a wee bit. I know. And and might the well. same feed system will do it. Sa the vectors they yeah. do it. They, yeah. they talk one tub, so one vector should do three hundred cows. Okay. Great. So you have room to double. And then if you need more, you just get another day of feeder. Yeah, great. You don't need another kitchen, so it works Good. It works well that way. Good. So that might be a few years down the line. Yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all the time progress. You're all the time looking forward to it. So. Yes, yeah. No, you know, if the thing was at standstill, 
you wouldn't enjoy it as yeah, much. Yeah, no, it's good, a great story, and it's good to be involved with an experience. Oh, business. without a doubt. Yeah, 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 and it's, it's you're not, like, no other farm I'm on, and I get to see a vector working, or I get to work with it every day, and it's out, you're learning something every day. Yes. With the robots, and you're building up connections, and yeah. you're seeing how cows, you know, what type, different type of cows work, and, mm. uh, whatever, and everything. Yeah, no fair play. So, look, thanks for showing us around, Oshin. No weather at all. Very impressive. Yeah, thanks very much okay. for coming. Thank yeah. you very Spreading. much. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.